So we're, uh, today we're going to start in the world of AutoCAD. And I know that this class seems like it speeds up as we go through. It's like we you know, did Photoshop, then we do uh, InDesign, quickly into Illustrator. Now we're in AutoCAD. Before long, we'll be in SketchUp. Uh, such is the nature of the class. Um, I think AutoCAD is kind of the staple architectural tool uh, or design tool in our, in our tool belt that we will be, uh, or you will be using kind of predominantly in your careers going forward. AutoCAD has been around forever, essentially, uh, in the world of computer drafting. It is certainly the standard product. Um, we have once a, once a year slash once a semester, we have a meeting where we, um, as faculty, get together with a bunch of people that are in practice, and we talk about what are the kinds of things that we think our students need to, to learn, how are they doing, do students that come out of DBC have the skills that, that, need, that they need uh, to work in an office, et cetera. And in this class, I used to teach a little bit of Vectorworks, um, and that was that was pushed on. Oh no, we you know we're going to learn Vectorworks or whatever. And through these series of meetings over time, um, a lot of the people that were out in practice said, you know, really we need people that have experience with AutoCAD. Uh, they're out of the percentage of what offices tend to use. Um, I have no scientific basis in this, but I would guess that 60% or more of offices use AutoCAD as their primary design tool or as their primary drafting tool. Um, it's switching a little bit. You guys may have heard of the, the software program Revit. Um, Revit is made by Autodesk, the same people that make AutoCAD, so there are certainly similarities. Um, Revit is kind of taking off in the firms that do larger projects. I think it's still not quite as accepted in the smaller offices because of its cost. And also for smaller projects, it's not quite as, as relevant to be using it for smaller projects. It's really, really good for large projects with teams of people that are working on the same file because it has a great way of sharing and kind of collaborating. Uh, a variety of the engineers can work on the same drawings that the architects can work on, the lighting consultants can work, and it makes a pretty integrated project when you have a large team. If you're working for a sole proprietor architect, chances are they're going to be using AutoCAD because it's, it's simpler. Uh, and we don't need that kind of collaboration tools. Um, so anyway, all of this uh, kind of summarizes as to why I try to teach a little bit of AutoCAD in this class. And AutoCAD is not uh, a program that you can pick up on super quickly. It takes time. It's a very complicated program. But it is something that you're going to really need to learn and to understand to be able to use. There are separate AutoCAD classes that are offered by DVC that will teach you um, more of the technical, this is AutoCAD from the ground up. Um, some of you may have already taken them or are planning on taking them. I think it's 126 is the introductory AutoCAD class. Uh, if you've already taken it or are currently taking it, this will be very easy for you. Right? My hope is that rather than take you completely from the ground up, this is basic AutoCAD, I'm going to try to distill out the things that I think are most relevant for you to know as designers. Um, as opposed to this is how you draft some you know, random engineered object or something. So we're going to focus on more on the architectural side. We're going to be drawing floor plans and elevations, which I think are, are particularly relevant for the direction we're going. Uh, and I'll show you kind of the, the key ideas. I will also focus on getting something out of AutoCAD and printing it. Um, we will take the AutoCAD file. We'll make a PDF out of it. We will then take the PDF into Illustrator, do some collage work on top of that file, and then you will actually plot in this class. So you have experience with the big printers to print wide format, et cetera. So it's all part of your next assignment. But I'm not giving you that yet because we have to get started with some basics uh, to begin with. How many people have used AutoCAD in the past? OK, that's pretty good. So this section will be relatively easy for you. Um, the other thing that I like to point out is my 136 class, my next course, is um, very much about Rhino and V-Ray, which you're aware of. Rhino and AutoCAD are shockingly similar in their interfaces, in their commands, in how you work with them. So if you feel comfortable in AutoCAD, you'll end up feeling comfortable in Rhino. If you feel comfortable in Rhino, you can end up feeling fairly comfortable in AutoCAD. So it works to your advantage to, to learn both. Um, and to me, I would say uh, Rhino is what AutoCAD should have been in three dimensions. Uh, AutoCAD is absolutely fantastic in 2D, uh, not so good in 3D. It's pretty chunky. And I think Rhino works a lot better for the 3D stuff. Um, so anyway, we're going to start in AutoCAD in just a second. But I did, by chance, 
Uh, I have a project that I'm working on for the city of Lafayette right now, or in the city of Lafayette, and I had to update some drawings. Um, so this role is my current plan set, um, and I'll put it in the back so you guys can have a look at it if you want. Uh, it's about 40 something pages of drawings. All 90% um, of this was done in AutoCAD. There's a few pages, uh, like the landscape plan was done in Illustrator. It was AutoCAD first, and then Illustrator did the actual plants and, and that sort of thing. Uh, and there's a few other pages that were assembled outside of AutoCAD. But essentially, this is a full construction document packet um, that we're going through the design, or we've finished the design review process, but we're going through and, and actually going to pull permits based on these drawings. So it may or may not be something that's interesting for you. I think all too often in the world of school, we focus on all the design drawings more than we focus on actual, like, this is what it takes to build a building drawings. Um, so this is the, this is what it takes to build a building drawings. Uh, this is a five unit apartment complex. Um, so you can get a sense for, for what it is. I'll put it in the back and you guys are welcome to look through it. Please don't harm it because it does have to go back to the city. And um, I'm only borrowing it because we had some changes to the drainage plan and I needed to update those changes. Um, so anyway, I'll put it in the back and you guys can see it later. But I think it's kind of relevant because we're talking about AutoCAD uh, in the first place. And this is very much an AutoCAD um, sheet set. So probably more, more in depth than, than you guys will be going in this class. Uh, but such is life. OK, so I've gone ahead and I've opened up AutoCAD 2017 on this computer. It really doesn't matter whether you work in AutoCAD 2016, 2017, 2015. They're all pretty much the same. Um, AutoCAD has been around so long that it's kind of a very staple environment. And so yes, Autodesk comes out with updates every year. And we have new version, new version, new version. But it's really all the same. Uh, you know, I have the, actually the engineer that works on this project is using AutoCAD 2004, I think. And it's essentially the same thing. I can still open 2004 file, not a big deal. You know, were there some improvements? Yeah. Um, the one thing I would say, the, there's a pretty big step in from, they didn't do a 2009 release, but from 2008 to 2010, there was a pretty big jump uh, in terms of the graphic interface, et cetera. So uh, if you're working on it, I would suggest learning 2010 or newer. Um, but since we have two, 2017 on these computers, we're going to start with that. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and create a brand new drawing. And in the upper left corner of the page, there's a kind of a blank page looking thing. That's a new drawing button. And it will bring up a select template dialog box. And we will just use the basic ACAD template and have that go ahead and load up. So before we get into to too much about AutoCAD, I like to walk through a lot of the interface because this is the first program that looks very different from the Adobe suite that we've talked about. Adobe always looks the same. Photoshop looks the same as Illustrator. InDesign looks the same as Illustrator. You get the idea. Okay? This is different. And so I want to talk you through it. The other thing to point out is that very frequently on these lab computers, somebody will customize something or it will look slightly different than what I'm showing on the screen. I try to keep the default set so that it looks exactly like yours looks, but there's possibilities that something will be missing. Just let me know, and we'll try to get that something back uh, for you. So uh, across the top, we have our basic file operations. So new file, open file, save file uh, is the little floppy disk. There is also a little pull down that will let us adjust other things. One thing that may be relevant is something called workspace. The workspace is what mode you're drawing in. And by default, it should be drafting an annotation mode, uh, which is what I will stick with for the, the bulk of this semester and what I would encourage you to stick with. There are also um, 3D basics, 3D modeling, drafting workspaces. We're not doing anything in 3D, so there's no reason to be in 3D at all. Okay? If for some reason your, your toolbars look different, Right, for example, I'm in 3D Basics. This workspaces, if you go back to the drafting and annotation, it should reset to the default, uh, and it should look exactly like mine looks. At least that's the hope. Okay. So as we move down, uh, AutoCAD is organized by these kind of big toolbar ribbons, uh, so to speak. We have a tab called Home, and Home is what we'll be primarily working with. And then we have some other tabs that are available here. They look like menus, but they're actually tabs. So if, for example, I went to Insert, we get a whole different ribbon of tools. Annotate gives a whole different ribbon of tools, et cetera. We're going to concentrate just on Home today. So you should be on the Home tab. 
And then the Home tab is broken into several different regions. Uh, the first region is Drawing. So we have Line, Polyline, Circle, Arc, and then there's some smaller tools over here on the right, like a rectangle or an ellipse that are available. These are the most common drawing tools that you will need access to. So it's organized by, this is the most common. Uh, the big ones are obviously the most common of the most common. Um, if you want something else, there is a little drop down menu that you can click on here, draw with a little arrow, and it'll give you some other options. These are less common tools, but they are available there. Next, we get to the modify set of tools. And these are things where you're modifying objects or modifying things that you've drawn. Uh, for example, moving, copying, rotating, trimming, those kinds of things. Okay, So any of those are available here under the Modify Tools. And we'll talk about what all of those are in a little bit. As we move over to the next section here, it's called Annotation. These are when you need to do dimensions, or you need to, to, to indicate how large something is, or, or that sort of thing, is available here in Annotation. Annotations are not something that we will have enough time in this class to cover at all. Um, so as you move forward, you may consider taking the 126 class so you have a little bit more experience with, with dimensions and, and how that works. So we're not going to be doing annotations, but it is available there should you want to. The next little section here is called Layers. We, much like Photoshop, InDesign, Illustrator, we in AutoCAD will organize our work into layers. And th those layers will help us stay organized and be able to selectively turn objects on, turn objects off. We can even set up a special layer to be a printing layer or a non-printing layer. So we could have something with a bunch of guides on it that wouldn't end up printing. Uh, and so I'll walk through what the, the layer commands are. Uh, but that's under Layers. Blocks over here have to do with referencing another object. We're not going to worry about that so much yet. Properties has to do with what are the properties of a given line. How thick is a line? Is it a dashed line? Is it a center line? What kind of line is it, et cetera? Uh, so those are available there as well. And then we end up with some utilities down here at the end, like a measure tool, et cetera. Okay? So those are all available in our ribbons at the top of the page. As we come down uh, and we look at the bottom of our page, right? you probably will see this. And I, this is always hard because it's so low for you guys to see. Uh, but this white ribbon that goes across the bottom here is called a command line. And if you, if you look at the text, it says type a command. Okay? AutoCAD works differently than uh, the Adobe Suite in that every command that is available by clicking on a button is also available by typing. So if you wanted a line, for example, you could type line into the command line. Right? If you wanted a polyline, you could type P line. Okay? So every, if you wanted a circle, you could type circle. All of those are available via the command line. If you're just starting out in the world of AutoCAD, there's a pretty good chance that you're just going to click on the button that represents what you're doing. As you improve and as your speed improves in the world of AutoCAD and or in the world of Rhino, you'll find that using the command line saves a huge amount of time. And so by being able to type L for line, you've, you've saved you the time of going up and clicking on the line button and then coming back down. Okay. The other thing about the command line is it will prompt you for the next step. So in a line, it'll say, you know, what's your first coordinate point, and then what's your next point. So it's not that hard. But sometimes when you're using a more complicated command, there will be information or the ability to select certain options relating to that command that will show up in the command line. So you want to keep kind of one eye on the command line and see what it says. And that's something that's important down the road to make sure that you're seeing. Okay. Below that. We have some tabs. Right now, model is highlighted. We're going to stay in model space. I'll talk about what paper space is later on, but we'll work in model space. And then over here on the right are a bunch of little buttons right? that include things like your drawing grid, turning it on and turning off. So these, all these are little toggles that will help you uh, do your drawings. And I'll talk about what all of these little uh, tools are in a second. But before we get too far, I'm actually going to have you turn off something for me. And that something is called dynamic input. And it's the, uh, generally speaking, you're always going to leave it on. But for the interest of learning AutoCAD, I want you to turn it off so that we can talk through it a little bit. Um, it's not shown by default. Um, so if you click on the very far right corner, there's three horizontal lines. If you click on that, there's a listing for dynamic input. I want to make sure dynamic input is checked. Okay, And when I check it, it will show up down here at the bottom. And it, the icon for dynamic input looks like a plus with a rectangle below it. Let's 
see if I can get a pen here. It looks like this. There's the little button. Okay. You want to make sure that it is not blue, that it is white. Okay. And we're just temporarily turning that off. We'll end up turning it back on and you'll have it on most of the time anyway. Okay. So, as we look at the AutoCAD workspace, it's, it's also different from um, the Photoshop, InDesign, Illustrator, Adobe Suite in that we're drawing white lines on a black background. And there were studies done a long time ago with people that used to stare at screens for long periods of time, i.e. drafts people architects, right? We have a tendency to stare at screens for a long time, that it is far easier on our eyes if we look at white lines on a black background than the opposite. If we look at black lines on a white background, it's harder. Okay? And then we get more fatigue, we can't see as well, etc. So AutoCAD switched and the, the workspace is inverted from normal. Okay, so white lines uh, on a black background. Whenever you go to print in AutoCAD or make a PDF or anything, the white and black reverse. So grays do not reverse, they're the same, but the white and the black will reverse. So it's a little bit weird to get used to, but just trust in the system that, that white will become black um, when you go to print. So the other thing about the world of AutoCAD is that for the first time, we're actually dealing with scale. Okay, so when we worked in Photoshop, we had, uh, oh, we wanted to clone stamp something. We didn't worry about what's the scale. We just kind of, oh, this looks about right, and we did it. Okay, likewise, in the, uh, in the world of InDesign or in Illustrator, we just kind of drew something, and it looked about right for the, the size of the drawing we were drawing. In the world of AutoCAD, we actually draw in full size. So we don't scale anything until later on. So if we were drawing um, a building and it was 24 feet long, we draw 24 feet of line. So we actually have a 24 foot line. AutoCAD deals with these measurements and it actually has a precision value, should we want it, up to 16 decimal places. So it's extraordinarily precise. And for the scale of a building, we don't need 16 decimal places because we're never going to build it that precise. But if we were machining some kind of a, a you know, a three-dimensional part or something on a Haas milling machine or whatever, we might want that kind of precision for the part we were building. So because AutoCAD is universal and can be used for those kinds of environments, uh, it makes sense to have that level of accuracy. But since we're working in units, um, we need to make sure that we specify what units we're working in and that our default units are correct. So the first thing that I'm going to do before we even get started is I'm going to type into this command line. Remember, it says type into the command line. I'm going to type units, and I'll hit Enter. Now, you could get to this via the, the menu structure, but it's a whole lot easier to just type units. Okay? And I'd also like to point out, on this sheet, uh, I try, whenever I type something in, I try to change the font so that it's like a typewriter. Do you guys see that? So in the, in the part one, first bullet point, so begin with a new drawing in AutoCAD, type units. See how units is like a typewriter? Okay. I try to make sure everything that's typed in is typed like that, so you, you know that that's what I mean. Okay. So I've gone ahead and I've typed units, and I get the drawing units dialog box that pops up. Okay. This is where I can specify what the units of this drawing should be in. And so I'm going to pick architectural, and when I pick architectural, it will also give me a precision value. Okay. This is what I was talking about, about the 16 decimal places if we wanted it. I don't need that level of precision. A 16th of an inch is plenty precise for an architectural building. Okay. So we'll leave it right there. In angle, I'm going to stick with decimal degrees. I don't need to be in radians or anything uh, weird, so we'll stick with decimal degrees. My units to scale inserted content would be to inches. If I had uh, content that was going to be inserted, I would, uh, the default units essentially are inches. So I'll go ahead and I'll say OK. And I now have my drawing set up in feet and inches, which is what I want. When I type in a value of inches, I'm going to use the quotation mark. When I type in a value of feet, I will use the apostrophe mark on the keyboard. Okay? So let's go ahead and get started with our first line. Okay? So I'm going to come up and I'm going to pick the polyline tool. Alternatively, I could type P line. And you'll see down at the command line here at the bottom that when I picked the polyline tool, 
P line is listed in bold. So that is the key command for this, P line. Okay. Okay, so AutoCAD is also based mathematically. Remember we had that lecture that was about raster graphics and vector graphics? And I was talking about how Illustrator is a vector graphics program. You could scale up and scale down. It doesn't make any difference. Okay? AutoCAD is very much a vector graphics program as well, which means that it's based on math. And so if you guys remember back to like, what was it, Algebra 1 or something like that, where we did kind of basic graphing and we had coordinates. You guys kind of remember this a little bit? Right? There was this graph paper, and you had to plot out what the function was and what the line looked like and you know whatever, vaguely. Okay? AutoCAD works exactly the same way in that we have a coordinate system that's been established for us, and we're going to be drawing on that coordinate system. So right now, this x and y in my lower left corner here represents my coordinate system. And if I zoom out a little bit, we might be able to see if I can bring it up a little bit higher in the page here. There we go. I'm just moving it to the center so you guys can see it so it's not by, behind me. So I have x and y represented. There's a green line that goes up in the y. There's a red line that goes out in the x. Okay? And this is basically a piece of graph paper. So I could come over a certain number of units in x value, and I could go up a certain number of units in y value. Well, I can use that to my advantage. Let's say that I want to start my drawing at this point right here. Okay? Now, I could move my mouse over this point and say, ah, yeah, that's, that's right on the point. Okay? And I could start my drawing. But as I zoom in, right, the more I zoom in, the more it's not on that point anymore. Do you guys see how that works? Right? So it's not on the point that I thought it was. So instead, when I do polyline, I'm going to type in 0, 0, which mathematically represents the origin. So 0, 0, and I'll go ahead and hit Enter. Okay? Now, no matter how much I try to zoom in, it's always going to be right at that x and y. See how it's never off from x and y? It's right on x and y. And that's where I want it to be. So let me go ahead and zoom out a little bit. Okay? And I can use this coordinate system to my advantage as well by typing in the next value of the point. So let's say that I wanted a line that was 24 feet going up this x direction, or up the y direction here. I could type in the next coordinate of this point which would be 0 in the x direction and 24 feet in the y direction. So I go ahead and type 0, comma, 24, and then the apostrophe sign for feet. And when I type that in and I hit Enter, it will go ahead and it will draw a line that's 24 feet in that direction. Now, unfortunately, in the template that we're working with, it's a little bit too small, so we're not seeing the full 24 feet. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Enter on my keyboard to finish the command. And then I will go to zoom, which the easiest way to do that is to type Z for zoom. Or you could actually type zoom. Doesn't matter. And I'll hit Enter. And then you see how I was talking about before, when you have a command, sometimes there are options available to you relating to that command. So when I type zoom, I have a bunch of options that are available here. And so I could zoom all, zoom center, zoom dynamic, extents, etc. So let's go ahead and zoom all. And when I do that, I could see my whole white line right there. Okay. Now we'll go back to my polyline tool. And I'm going to continue from the point that I left off. Okay. Now, when I move my mouse close to the end, I should get a little green box that goes around my point. Okay. That is called snapping. And what that's ensuring is that when I start drawing, the start of my line will end up on top of this other point. So it's snapping, in this case, to the end point. If you're not seeing this, it is available under the Object Snap menu, which is right down here at the bottom. Looks like a um, blue square with a green dot in the corner. If I click on it, we can see what object snaps are available. Currently, I have endpoint, center, intersection, extension. I'm going to go ahead and turn on perpendicular. Uh, I like to have perpendicular on when I'm drawing. Okay. And let's turn on midpoint while we're here. So endpoint, midpoint, center, intersection, extension, and perpendicular are all turned on right now. OK, so as I move to this end, I get the little green square. When I click, it is right on top of that corner, which is how it should be. Okay. So I'm going to continue with this coordinate system. And the next point, I want to be 12 feet over from this last point. 
So if it's 12 feet over, it would be 12 feet. And then this point is also 24 feet up from zero. So it would be 12 feet comma 24 feet. And I'll go ahead and hit enter. Okay. These two coordinates are called absolute coordinates. So we have x and y at 0, 0. And then we have coordinates in space. They could be negative, they could be positive, but they're absolute. Yeah? What do you do if that isn't working? If what isn't that working? Do you have dynamic input turned off? I did. Check, check that dynamic input button. Yeah, OK, so make sure that's turned off. Dynamic input changes. It, it assumes that we're using relative coordinates. So uh, we'll get to that. OK, so those two coordinates were absolute coordinates. They were relative to point 0, 0, which is the origin in this drawing. That's fine when we're drawing a building starting at 0, 0. But sometimes you're just drawing off in space somewhere, and you don't really know where 0, 0, or the relationship between your points and point 0, 0. So many times we want to use something uh, relative to the last point that we picked. Okay? So if I was doing a line that was relative to the last point, relative to this point, and I wanted to go down, say, 6 feet here, I can use the at sign, so like an email sign, at to indicate that this is relative to the last point, And that then resets 0, 0 to be the last point that I clicked. So here, if I wanted to go down 6 feet, I would say at 0, comma, 6, negative, sorry, negative 6 feet. And it would go down 6 feet from the last point that I drew. Okay? If I wanted to go over 12 feet from this last point, I could say at, this time it would be 12 feet in the x direction, 0 in the y, and hit Enter. And I've drawn that as well. So the relative coordinates, it doesn't matter where the origin is. It just matters where the last point is that you clicked, okay? which can be convenient. So I'll continue on. And this time, I'll do a relative coordinate again. It would be at, this time it would be 0, comma, negative 12, apostrophe for feet, Enter. And I've gone down 12 feet. Okay. So I could switch back if I wanted to mathematically, and I could use a regular coordinate. So a regular coordinate would be over 12 feet and up 6 feet. So I would just type 12 feet, comma, 6 feet with no at sign. And I'd get, oops, and I'd get that point. Okay, so I've been drawing an AutoCAD for probably 20 years. It's kind of scary. Um, and so I can flip back and forth between these coordinates. It doesn't make any difference. For you, it'll be hard to think about these coordinates. Okay? Uh, and so we're going to show you a little bit easier way. But this is a really important way of understanding how AutoCAD works mathematically. Okay? So we'll flip back to a uh, relative coordinate now. I'd say at, uh, this would be 0, comma, negative 6 feet there. And then I'll go ahead and come back to the point that I started from. So I could either type in 0, 0, or I could go right to this point. There it is. And hit Enter to finish. And I've down drawn that shape. Okay. So let me show you again. But this time, I'm going to turn it back on that dynamic input button. So remember, we turned it off. It's this, this icon here, the plus with the little bar below it. And when I turn dynamic input back on, Right? This time, it's going to be a little bit different. So I'll pick the polyline, and I'm going to go over here in space. Notice that my cursor, so here with dynamic input off, I just have a cross as my cursor. When I turn dynamic input on, see how I have a little gray box that says specify start point, and it has two values? Okay? Those values change as I move the mouse. Right? Let me go ahead and just click randomly here. Okay? It, it'll say specify next point. And you see how now, instead of picking a coordinate, it gives me like a little dimension line right there. And it has a value that's highlighted in blue. I can type in a value here. So I could type, say, 24 feet. So with dynamic input on, I don't even have to worry about the coordinate system at all. I can just use that dynamic input. So the next thing here, I want to go over 12 feet. So I just type 12 apostrophe. Enter, and I've gone over 12. I want to go down 6 feet. I just type that. And you can see that I can continue my way around this very, very easily. Okay. I also, as I'm drawing, besides a length, 
I have the ability to specify a angle. So you see over, um, so I have my length here highlighted in blue. I have an angle right here at 51. Okay, it's telling me what that angle is. I can press the tab key and I can switch fields. So now the 51 is highlighted and I could specify say 45 degrees and I could press the tab key and then it would give me a length but my length is restricted to being at 45 degrees. Okay, and so I could say maybe 12 feet there. Now I could press tab and I could say negative, what is it, 225? And I could type in the 12 feet in this direction. Okay, so the point is that I have the ability with dynamic input on to make these kinds of modifications relatively easily. So it's just an angle and a distance. Let me back up to here and I'm going to continue with 12 feet. I'll go over by 12 feet. I'll go down by 6 feet and I'll go over to where it started. Okay? And if you've used Rhino, this is very much the same as Rhino. Uh, Rhino doesn't use the dynamic input cursor up by your cursor, but you can type in the values as you start to draw. Uh, it works the same way. So I now have this shape. And I need to make it so that it has two walls. And you'll notice on the back of this page, okay, there's a little basic floor plan. This is essentially what we're drawing for today. You do not have to do any of the dimensions on it. You're just drawing the floor plan itself, right? And I apologize, some of the lines ended up too thin on the copy machine to show up. So that's, that's the way it works. If we looked at it um, online, you could see a better version of it. Anyway. So what I need to do is I need to start creating some thickness for these walls, okay? And I'll go ahead and uh, I'll use the second one that I drew right here. And I want to create a six inch thick wall. This is not a technical class. We're not going to talk about what the actual thickness of a wall is. We're going to use generic terms. So six inches is generically a wall, okay? If you want to talk construction stuff, we can do that some other time. Uh, so. When I start to create this wall, I need a second set of lines. And so could I come with the polyline and start drawing, you know, six feet away or six inches away and then start drawing my way around? Sure. Okay, I could do the math. But that's a little bit too hard. Let's use one of our modify commands to offset this line six inches away. And so the offset tool is available under modify. It's, it looks kind of like a cloud with a blue line around the outside. Okay. You could pick the offset tool. You could also type offset into the command line. And the first thing that offset asks us down here in the command line is specify offset distance. So what is our distance? What should it be? Let's say six inches. And then I'll go ahead and hit enter. And so now I have an offset distance of six inches. And now it says select object to offset. So I want to be able to select my object and I'll go ahead and click on the object itself. Okay? And when I do that, I can move to either the inside or the outside of my original object. And so in, in this case, I'm going to move to the inside. And you see that it creates a second line that goes all the way around the inside. And I'll go ahead and click. And you can also see it says specify point on side to offset. So I'll specify a point on this side, and I create my second line. Okay? Relatively easy, a lot faster than trying to draw it. Okay? If you didn't have this as a closed polyline, you may have to offset lines individually. Um, but in my case, it, it had it as a closed polyline. Okay? So I have that. So now I need to continue drawing. And so let's look at the top of this side here. And I want to draw a three foot door in the center of this top side. Okay? So I'm going to start with just the basic line tool. And I want to draw a line that goes from the center to the center of this line. And so I've already turned on midpoint in my object snaps. If you don't have midpoint turned on, you're going to want to come down to your object snap icon and make sure midpoint is checked, which it is right there. And then I'll be able to use my line tool. And as I move close to the center, you see, I, instead of getting a box, which was the corner or the end, I get a triangle. And that triangle is representative of the midpoint of this line. So I'll go ahead and draw to the midpoint. 
and I'll draw down until I meet the midpoint of this line. And I'll go ahead and click. When I'm done, I'll go ahead and hit the Enter key to finish. So now I have a line, and that represents the very center. But the door is actually an opening that was three feet. So I need to offset this line half of three feet and then half of three feet. So I'll go back up to the offset tool, and this time it says specify offset distance. Well, half of three feet, depending on how you want to do it, is either one foot six or 18 inches. Obviously, 18 inches is a little bit easier to type, so I could just type 18 followed by the inch mark, and I'll go ahead and hit enter, okay? Then I could go ahead and offset this line 18 inches, which is one foot six, okay? If I wanted to type it in again, I could go back to offset. The distance is kept as the last distance. So I could just hit enter because it's going to be the same distance. Or I could actually type in, this time I'll type in one foot, the dash sign or the minus sign, followed by six inches. So you could type in a foot and inch value, or you could type it in in all inches. Doesn't make any difference. Okay? So I have one foot six inches. I'll press enter. Select my object to offset, there it is, and I'll offset to that side as well. Okay. I'll hit enter to finish. So now that I've done that, okay, I have two lines here and here, and I want to use those two lines to basically trim out this center section. I want to get rid of these two lines so that it's an opening in the wall. So I'm going to use a command that's called trim. And so if we come up to the modify tools here, you'll once again see something called trim. And when I click on trim, if we look at our command line, it'll say select objects or select all. Okay, so a couple things. This, this brings up how AutoCAD works in terms of selections. So in the world of AutoCAD, if you select from the left to the right, AutoCAD will select everything that is completely contained within your square. So you see I'm going from left to right, and I'm only selecting those three lines. Okay, I'm not selecting the two big lines here or the two walls. If, however, I select from the right side to the, to, to the left, anything that this square touches will select. And you can also see that the two selections are different. One is green and one is blue. Okay? On the surface, this doesn't seem important. As you get more and more complicated drawings, this will actually make a big difference okay? in terms of being able to select all that it touches or just what's contained within the box. Okay? So I'll go ahead and go from the right to the left and select everything. And then I'll go ahead and hit Enter. And then from here, I need to click on the lines that I want to get rid of. And so you'll see as I move my cursor over one of these lines, I get a little red X and the line grays out. If I were to click on it, that line will go away. Likewise, I can click here, I can click here, and I can click here. Okay? If I try to click on this center line, see how I get the little null sign? It won't let me do it. That's because this line can't actually be trimmed. It has to be deleted, right? Because it doesn't cross anything. It's just its own line. So I'll go ahead and hit Enter to finish. And then I'll go ahead and select this line, going from left to right. And I'll press the Delete key on the keyboard. And that line will then go away. Okay. So let me go ahead and use the rectangle tool here. And I'm going to draw the door. I'll start with the rectangle. It says specify first corner. That would be my first corner. Then it says specify other corner, right? Or it gives me some other options, like I could specify an area or dimensions or something, okay? But I'm going to go ahead and specify the other corner. So the thickness of the exterior door is going to be uh, one inch, one and three quarters inches. So 1.75 followed by inches. And I'll press tab to move to the next, which would be the distance down, uh, which would be negative um, three feet. And I'll go ahead and hit enter. And I've now drawn my door. Okay, So I've used dynamic input to be able to draw that door. Okay, So I have the little door drawn. It might be time for an arc to represent the swing of the door. If I use the arc tool here, there are several tools that are arc tools hidden under the first arc tool. And they depend on what you're trying to draw as to what's easier. I'm going to click on the little arrow next to arc. And instead of picking the three-point arc, which is the default, I'm going to pick 
the start, end, and direction arc. It's about halfway down. So start, end, and direction. And I'll specify a start, an end, and a direction. And I'll just go off at 90 degrees here. And I'll hit Enter. And that gives me a li my little door. Okay. The last thing that I'll draw is a window in this side. And so I want to start with a basic line tool. And I know based on my dimensions that I need to go from this corner point over 1 foot 6 to, to start the window. Okay, it's not centered on this wall, it's over 1 foot 6. So when I do that, if I move my mouse to this corner, and then I move it over, see how it puts a little green plus right on the corner, and then it gives me a green dotted line going off in one direction? You guys see that a little bit? Okay. This will allow me to specify a distance from that green little plus sign. So I can then type in 1 foot 6, enter, and it will then start my line 1 foot 6 over from that little green plus. Okay, it takes practice to be able to do this, okay? And you guys will work on it today. So I'll go ahead and press enter, or excuse me, I'll go ahead and click perpendicular, and I'll hit enter. And then I'll repeat this just for practice. I'll use the line tool. This time it's going to be two feet from that point. So once again, I move my mouse. I don't click. I just hover over the point. It sets that little plus sign. I move to the right, and I type two feet, followed by enter. And now my new line starts at two feet. And I'll draw that little perpendicular. All right. So now I have that. I'm going to go ahead and draw a line that goes across the center. So just from center to center to represent the glass makes it look like a window. And I could do the same process for the, the window that's on the other side. Okay? But to me, it would be a little bit easier if I used a command like mirror to take this and mirror it to this side. So I'll go ahead and I'll select this window, recognize that I selected from my left to my right to select all the objects of the window. If I did right to left, I would select everything. So I want to make sure it's selected from left to right. There it is. I'll use the mirror tool. And I don't have a point in the center of this door anymore, so I'll use the center on the opposite side. And I'll draw the mirror line. And we get a copy. It asks me, do I want to erase the source objects? No is the default. No, I don't. And so now I have a window here and a window here. Okay, So I could take this a step further. I could take this window, and I could mirror it again. But this time, instead of mirroring it across this way, I'm going to mirror it across a 45 on the corner, which will give me a window on that side. And I can do the same thing with this, with mirror right there to right there. Okay, that gives me those two windows. I could then take this and this, and I could mirror them from the center here down to that lower section. And now I need to make one more where I copy this over so that it's uh, six inches from the last. So let me go ahead and use the copy command. I'll start from here. I need to go over the distance of the window, which would be two feet, plus the distance between the window, which would be six feet, or six inches. So I will go over two feet, six inches, enter. And that gives me the second window down here. Okay. So I know AutoCAD's a lot to take in. I know that you'll have questions. Uh, as you start in this process. Some of you will go very fast through this. If you've had AutoCAD experience before, this will be easy. If you've never touched AutoCAD before, you, this will be hard, and that's to be expected. Okay? So we take little steps along the way. This is what we're starting with. Again, our goal is to draw what's on the back of this today. No dimensions, no numbers, nothing like that, just the actual plan, the walls, the windows, and the doors. Okay? I notice that I don't specify the distance from the wall to the, to the door back here, or the distance from the wall to the door here, you can make it whatever you want. Probably four inches, six inches, something like that would be reasonable. All right? Are there any questions? No? All right. 